It's another day, it's another Maker Advent, and what have we got on the bench today? Well, Banana for Scale is propping up this box because it's very shiny with my overhead lights. It is some Poundland Fairy Lights, 50 multicoloured fairy lights. So these are what we call Christmas lights, fairy lights in the UK. Uh, 3.8 metre cable, battery operated, indoor only. It has two modes, on all the time or flashing. That's it. Nothing fancy, no web connected stuff or anything like that. It just turns on or flashes. So let's bring the lights into shot and let's see what we've got. Well, there we go, there's the lights and there's the box. I've taken the liberty of taking the screw out because, you know, I'm not going to eat the batteries. I've also taken a look at the circuit board already, in Big Clive fashion, but without his level of expertise. It has a plastic cover on to keep you safe from harm, I guess. Anyway, uh, It also comes pre-broken, because I accidentally broke it when I took the case off. Whoops. One of the wires came off here. Unfortunately, so... It does work, it does flash, trust me on that. In fact, I'll put the batteries in, I can show you so I can hold the wire in place. The soldering on the wiring, not great, not great at all. But you're paying two pounds. So you're not gonna expect the highest level of workmanship here, are you? So let's put the batteries in, done. We've got one little, you can just see it, one little wire hanging out here. I'm gonna set it to on. And I'm going to hold that wire to the contact. And you can see the flashing, well, you can see the lights flashing accidentally because I'm holding the wire in place. If I set it to flash now, it's simple. The old just flash as one. Well. But as they are, these LEDs, they're, they're cool, but now eh, they're a bit meh. I need to do something better with them. So. Let's do something better with them, with some tech. We've got a selection of tech to play with. Bibby's out shot for a second, excuse me. Hello, banana for scale. We've got bog standard Pico. We could use that one. This is my Pico I've had since, in fact, this is one that I got sent when the Pico first came out. It's also got Pimeroni's Captain Resetti on, so you can just reset the Pico out and plug in it. I have a Pico W. We could use that one, connect it to the web, do some crazy stuff. We could use Anvil, that would be fun. Or we could use something else. Remember the video I did for ESP32s on day eight? Link up there, uh, now. Yeah. Uh, I forgot I had an extra ESP32. In fact, I forgot I had two. One's in a box somewhere. It's not easy to get to, but this one is on my desk. And I missed it, yeah. Clever me. We have Banana Pie Pico W. Very similar form factor to the Pico W. Very similar pinout. I've not confirmed if it's exactly the same. I will later in this video, trust me. And similar price. But this is ESP32. It doesn't have the programmable I.O. and the multi-cores and blah 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 that this has. But ESP32 is tried and trusted, been around for years, it does the job. So perhaps that would be an interesting one to play with today. Wire up some circuits, make those lights flash, perhaps web connected. Could be fun. Or we could go Pico W, use Anvil. Or just create something really simple with an MPN transistor and have this flash when a sensor triggers it. What shall we do? What shall we do? Find out in a second when I cut to the next bit of the video. Well, what a busy day today has been. We have banana for scale. It dazzled with LEDs from Christmas fairy lights from Poundland, but they were two pound. Okay. Um, banana pie Pico, front and center, controlling the show. We have turned two pound fairy lights, Christmas lights from the pound shop into internet controlled Christmas lights using Banana Papico, which is an ESP32. Um, absolutely a doddle. So this is running the latest version of CircuitPython. It comes preloaded with CircuitPython, which is just great. Fantastic. I'm going to explain how I did this so you can reproduce it yourself. 
don't worry about the diagrams, uh, the code and all that. I'm going to stick it all in the GitHub repository and put it in the description down below. So down there. So you can follow along, do what you want. Right, so this is the end product. All right, it's not a banana wrapped up in LEDs. That's a bit silly. That's the end product with LEDs. How's it all work together? Well, circuit diagram. There is our banana pie pico. There wasn't a fritzing part, so I doctored this one. It's authentic, it's got banana for scale, obviously. Pin out, from what I can gather, is identical to a Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's a win. So anyways, starting at the top left, that little black thing with an N in the center, that's an NPN transistor, a 2N2222. And that transistor's job is to connect the ground of the Banana Pi Pico W, which is the black line going from the Pico to the NPN transistor's right leg, to the ground wire of the LEDs, which is via a screw terminal, and another black wire. How do we connect it? Well, the transistor is activated when we send a signal from a GPIO pin. So just underneath that part is a, what is it, a 1K resistor, brown, black, red, yeah, 1K, and that's connected to GP15. So when I turn GP15 on, the signal goes via that resistor, that's there to prevent any damage possibly going back to the Pico, and it sends a signal to that NPN trans transistor and just says, hey, turn on, connect the grounds. The grounds are connected, but where does the power come from for this light? Well, it comes from the, if you look on the bottom right hand side of the Pico, you have the red wire. It goes one, two, three, four, five from the bottom right hand side. That's three volts, 3.3 volts. That goes to the screw terminal via a 10 ohm resistor. And uh, that took some finding in my bits box. And that was the exact same value used in that green controller box, which is now stripped for parts. So now when I send a signal to the NPN transistor, it turns on and it draws the correct amount of current as per what it came with. So how is it web enabled? I hear you say. Well, for that, I found this. It's, it's running CircuitPython. CircuitPython 8, I believe it is. 8.05, I think. Could be wrong there. Anyway, it's 8. This is Ampure from Decker Ego. And if I've got your name wrong, I apologise. I'm reading it from the screen. This is a tiny HTTP server that runs in CircuitPython. Literally, I went to the examples, got the LED example, copied it onto my Pico and then just changed the pin reference from internal pin, the internal LED on this, to GP15. And then connected the circuit, ran it and it worked. All it needs extra from you is a secrets.py file, which is a way of having your username, passwords, Wi-Fi, all, all that details stored safely, not in the main code. This will be in the description as well, so you can download it and run with it. It has been an absolute lifesaver really has. I'm glad I found it. It's, it's an old project, it's all 15 months old and never even heard of it, but absolutely great to see the community doing it. All I did with this was the Ampule code, ampule.py, copied that, stuck it in the lib folder of CircuitPython and away we went. What does it look like? Well, here we go. I'm not going to go through the entire, well actually I can go through everything, let's just do that. We start off with the basics that we've done it on a few days now with the uh, Maker Advent Calendar from the Pi Hut. We've got imports. Imports are extra libraries of code that we can use to add features to our code. So import board, GPIO, import Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi connections, socket pool, we're going to use sockets to make connections, Ampule, that's our HTTP server, time, that's used to pause our code, and digital IO is used to create digital inputs or outputs and we can specify their direction as well. And that's what we do with LED. We say LED is digital in out a board GPIO reference GP15. Its direction is output so current flows from it and the initial value is false off. Here we've got some HTTP headers. I'm not an expert in this area so I'm not going to delve too much but it's just something that we need to send with our HTTP request. Ampule.root on is the next bit. And this is really just uh, saying, right, when you receive a URL with slash on at the end, you need to call this function. So def light on, so define the function light on. LED value true, turn on the LED, return the HTTP code 200. Very hard for me to say. Send the headers, which are these things up here. And also send the custom message. This, this, 
This did say enable true, but I changed it to lights on. If we turn something on, we've got to turn it off and it's the same process. The root is off, functions call light off, we turn the LED off, false, and we send the 200 code with the custom lights off. But we want blinkies, so let's have blinkies. Here we have um, ampule.root flash. And it just makes a function called flash and uses a for loop that iterates 10 times to turn the LED on, pause for half a second, then turn the LED off, pause for half a second. Then it returns the same 200 code and it says lights flash. The rest of all this is Wi-Fi connections that we're not too fussed about right now. It's not too scary that code. I'm quite happy with that. How does it work? Well, now is where we get to the control part. This is Node-RED. Now this is running on a Linux VM I've got running on this system right now, just for convenience for me. And we have three buttons, on, off, and flash. Those are injections. So if you see in the top left, it says inject. We can inject strings or commands or integers, anything you want, into this flow in Node-RED. So Node-RED uses nodes, which are these boxes, connected via uh, wires to create a flow. And that's basically your project code. Like we go from top to bottom with Python, here we're going left to right with flows connecting each other. The middle box is HTTP request, and that sends an HTTP GET request, which is the URL, which contains HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, then the IP address of this banana pie pico. And I know on my home network, it's 192. 168.0.7. I tag on the end of that slash on slash off slash flash. That's not easy to say. And it'll send it to that device and it'll react. And I've also got it going to the debug, which is on the right hand side. That's a tall console. You can see I've been playing with it. So let's give it a go. If I go to my browser now, I'm going to click on. Bingo. LEDs. Nice. Let's go off. They're off. Let's try flash. Flashing lights. Really impressive. So how else can we control it? Well, if you want to use pure Python, I've done it. I've done some Python work today. This is why it's taking a bit of time. It's actually taken about six hours today, all this. Admittedly, I've had some work to do from freelance work and I've had a phone call with some friends in my local Linux user group, but I've also been doing this. So I'm going to just jump into that code so I can see it properly. Python code again. This is on my Windows machine right now. So import requests. That's Python's way of working with the web. Import time. We know that. We've played with it before. Easy GUI. Now I, I've installed this already. Easy GUI. It's just a pip install away if you need it. As the name suggests, is an easy graphical user interface tool. It hasn't got bells and whist whistles. It's not all singing, all dancing. It's not fantastic, but for simple GUIs, especially with kids. If you want to get something working fast, use Easy GUI. I've used it now for about six years. In fact, no, it's longer. Wow, eight years. Oh, I feel old. Right. Import sys, because I want to use sys.exit if everything goes wrong and I do a keyboard interrupt. That's later on. Okay, when it first turns on this code, I want it to send 10 pulses to the lights to show me that it's working. So for I in range 10, requests.get and then the URL I want it to send. In this case, the IP address slash on. Wait for 0.2 of a second, then send off and then wait for 0.2 of a second. Then I've got a try and accept conditional clause here. So try and do this. So forever controls a variable and object is going to store the output of easy GUI's button box function which just creates like a two button that's multiple buttons you can have we give it a title LED controls we say the message is control the LEDs and then we give it a choice which is just a list of two choices in this case on or off I've not done flash with this one this was just my bare test I then print the choice to the uh, Python shell and then say if the choice so controls was on send that URL that custom URL if it was off send that custom URL 
And each time the loop goes round, just wait a second. That's the main body of code. That's the controls for it. This last bit, accept keyboard interrupt, is just a get out of jail free card. If it all goes wrong, I can press control C and it'll print error to the Python shell and then exit. That's it. Now this one, I can't show you working on OBS. There's a little issue with it where it just won't show the window for me and it just crashes. I promise it worked. Click on or off and it just works. But yeah, that is it. We have blinky lights. Let's turn them on. Make it all look pretty for the end of the video. So it's taken a bit of work. You can see that I've had to put, so these are the wires here that came uh, with this, these LEDs. I had to chop the battery box out and I put some ferrules on the end. If you want to do proper work with wires, use ferrules. In fact, there's a video from a previous maker I've been, might be the first year, which I'll put up here. Oh, I'm really close to the camera, up there. Which is all about ferrules, but they give you mechanical strength for connections, which is really handy. Those thin little wires were awful. Even getting a ferrule on them was difficult. I had to double over the wire and twist it around a fair few times to fit it in the ferrule and then secure it in place. This could all be shrunk down as well. You could put it on some perf board and make it all nice and pretty. This is just here because it's quick and dirty to show in the video. And it's all powered from one single power source, which is Pico W's 3.3 volt regulator here. A longer project, but it's been great fun. I've learned a lot about this board in a short space of time, and I'm liking what I'm learning. So that's all for now. See you later.